Hello, it's Tellmange. I'm back playing Silent Hunter 3. Um, in my 10th uh, Flotilla Patrol, it is May the 1st, 1942. It's a Friday! Um, and we're about to set off on our second patrol of the career with my captain, Gunter Gatner. Um, he's a lieutenant and he has this much renown. He's in a um, Type 9B boat and the 10th Flotilla, as I said. I think I did all the crew stuff at the end of the last patrol. Let me just double check. No awards, no medals, no qualifications. Um, everything is as normal. Um, and I don't have any renown. Let's just check the torpedo loadout. What do we have? A lot of Type 2s. I don't really like the Type 2s. Um, let's swap this around a bit. Actually, pull up there. Um, let me see. See, the problem with the Type 1s is they are. How do I do this again? Oh, like that. They are visible during the day due to their wakes, which is not ideal. But then the Type um, 2 seem to malfunction so much. Hmm. 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 Let's just go kind of half and half with our torpedo configuration. Um, I don't know whether I should favour the Type Twos or Type Ones, so let's just leave it like that. We don't have enough renown, I don't believe, for any upgrades. Uh, no, everything else is fine. We've got our cow on board. That's good. All right, um, that's everything. So, let's go to um, the patrol. Uh, grid area will be C A seventy six. Now, I don't know exactly where that is, but I believe C A is the um, general area of New York. So we could be going near New York, which would be exciting. Um, news for April nineteen forty two: On the Eastern Front, the Russian counteroffensive comes to a halt. On the 9th of April, U.S. and Filipino troops surrender. Uh, U.S. and Filipino troops in the Philippines surrender. Uh, on the 9th, it's a Doolittle raid. B-25 bombers strike Japan, um, which kind of ties in with my Japanese um, IL-2 campaign. Um, from what I read in there, it took them a few years until bombers actually made a return trip to strike Japan. Um, or maybe I read that somewhere else, I don't know. Anyway, monthly losses were three U-boats for 418,161 tons of Allied shipping. And that's that. So I'm going to keep the settings as they are. I thought about changing the map contacts, but I'm going to leave the map contacts back on for one patrol. I don't really use them that much. Um, but it just kind of helps out. And then maybe I might switch them off for the next one, see how I feel and see what people think. So let's click start and um, get into our boat. And here we are, back in our lovely boat. The crew is all accounted for. We've got a stripy helmsman. Everything is well with the world. Uh, let's see, so it is 1825 on May the 14th actually not May the 1st it took us 14 days to get the ship prepared all the boats prepared I beg your pardon um, so it's time to uh, get ready for our journey um, let's head on out Ein Drittel fahrt voraus. Schiff gesichtet, Lage 9-3, mittlere Entfernung. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. We'll be back, don't worry. Right. Okay, let's check the map. Flugzeug gesichtet, Lage Flugzeug! Große Entfernung. Where's the Flugzeug? I want to see the Flugzeug. 
don't know where it is. Mm. Okay, well. Let's plot our grid. Uh, plot our course. I'm feeling a little bit out of sorts today. I've got a bit of a headache. Um, so I might not be my usual jovial self. So I apologise for that. Hopefully I feel better. Now we're going to CA-76. Now here is CA, which as I said was in the region of New York. Uh, 76 is... Where is it? There? You're sending me here? Oh my god. Shallow waters. That's not good. So, just south of Norfolk. There is a port here. And Washington is up here. Can't go to Washington. Too far inland. Well, that's interesting. We do also seem to have a supply boat here. And this is where we can dock and um, restock with, a, with fuel and torpedoes. So that could be interesting. We could use that. Um, yeah, but that's a strange spot they've sent me. Most of it is land and the rest of it is very shallow waters, which isn't ideal. Um, well, we'll just have to follow our orders. We have no choice. Speed things up a bit. Is that? Yeah, that looks like our kind of pilot ship in the distance. Let's follow it out. And there's a U boat returning home from patrol. Hi guys! Looks like a Type uh, 7 to me, unless I'm completely mistaken. Uh, let's take a closer look. Hmm, we've got the anti-aircraft man, but no watch crew on board, which is unusual. Yeah, I guess this is a Type 7. And here's ours. Big old Type 9. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, we need to follow this... Uh, Ship, this pilot ship here. We don't want to run into any mines. There's another U boat returning, hopefully from a successful patrol. And now the pilot ship's returning home. So now we have free reign to go where we please and we will be going all the way across to here CA 76 and let's check and make sure we don't um, run into any objects no islands or anything in our path which is good we're well clear of um, Spain so we don't need to go, go through allied airspace around Gibraltar so that is also good and we've pass very very closely to U461 so maybe we could um, organize a rendezvous and stock up on fuel as we go past that would be interesting um, but yeah that's it for now we've left port and we're on our way let's increase speed to standard ready for our long trip So, I will skip ahead now as we sail into the evening and I will pop back again 
once something interesting happens. Whoa! Okay, we are on our way. It is now May 18th, 1942. So we've been... We've been on the waves for four, for four days and we have suddenly spotted a pair of ships. Interesting. Looks like they're coming back across the Atlantic. And they are enemy ships. So, we get our first taste of action. Hmm, okay. So they're heading this way. Let's uh, intercept. We can also um, make a contact report. Maybe that will do something. I don't know. I doubt the Luftwaffe will turn up this far out to sea. Um, but yeah, let's just do it anyway. Um, I don't know if these guys are armed. If they're not, um, it's perfect conditions for a dead gun attack. But there's two of them, they could very well be armed, especially at this um, point of the war. Although if they are American ships coming across, then they may not be armed. Because American ships generally weren't. We're under attack! What? Are they, shoot are they spotted us? It says we're under attack. What, by these guys? Oh my god, we are. They spotted us. And they do have guns. Interesting. I think it's fairly unlikely they'll be able to, be able to hit us from this distance. How far away are they? Wow, almost... 14 kilometers away and they spotted us it, well the conditions are very calm okay well that was pretty close so let's dive <laughs> that is unfortunate Also means that our chance of performing an effective torpedo attack are now low because they're going to be zigzagging. Hmm. And they will also have radioed in our um, position. I would still like to have a crack at them though. Let's slow down the engines because we don't need to get very deep. Well, if they can spot us from 14 kilometers away, that is unfortunate. Um, It says they were going slow. Now, possibly, I don't know if we'll be able to outrun them if we are submerged. That's the only issue. I guess we can try. Mm. 
it's 3 p.m. local time. So, I was trying to think. Still quite wait until it's night time. Well, I guess let's just follow a course parallel to them. Should be about 60 degrees. See if, if we outrun them or if you stay with them or what happens. Oops, wrong, wrong way round. Okay. Yeah, I mean we're going three knots, so they will be going faster than us under under water. Six knots, maybe we might be able to at least match their pace. We want to try and wait until it's dark. Ideally, battery is down to 50%. And also, the question is when are they going to stop zigzagging? Go to periscope depth and um, have a peek. We need to slow down a bit because it's um, the vibrations are shaking the periscope, so we can't see properly. And there they are. Well, they've changed course slightly, but it looks as though they may have stopped zigzagging, maybe. Which would be good. Okay. Go to a course of about 330 degrees. Too far away to accurately identify them. So have to wait until they're a bit closer. Okay, and stop. We are very close as well to their projected course, about 700 meters away. So it might be worth backing up a little bit. Do it. Let's wait till they get a bit closer. And there they are. A couple of juicy looking targets, actually. Uh, what are they? I think it's a large troop ship, no. Small ocean liner, I don't think so. Oh, is that a troop transport? Mm, I don't think so actually. No, no, it hasn't got these um, diagonal things sticking out as far as I can see. And the funnel looks too wide there. Um, they don't look like tankers, it looks like they've got the um, smokestack in the middle of the ship rather than at the rear. At least I think that's the case. Granville type freighter, no. No. Large cargo? That could be a large cargo. This one here looks. Um, 
then again. It's got these like T shapes on the masts. And this one has like rec rectangles rather than T shapes. So maybe that isn't a large cargo. Liberty cargo. Aha! Maybe this is what it is. Okay, I'm going to say that one's a Liberty Cargo for now. This other one has a very large funnel. Mm, I don't think it's an ore carrier. And now we're getting into the smaller ships. I don't think it's a small one. It looks pretty big. Victory Cargo. Interesting. It's a cam freighter. It's not one of those. Okay, so we've obviously, obviously gone past um, the one at the rear. I don't know what it is. I don't recognise it. Nope. Nope. Not a tanker. It's an Empire Freighter. Granville. I don't think it's a Granville. It's got two masts here. One, is that like a triangle? Or not a triangle, but are they kind of, I think maybe they are. They're like in line. They're not one, one mast and then another mast in the rear. They're kind of parallel. This one's tricky. Uh, um, okay, a large merchant maybe. I'm going to say it's a large merchant. I don't know what it is, to be honest, but that's my guess. Okay, and they are closer than I thought they were. Very close, we need to back off. And it's still daytime, so we'll have to use the time twos. All right, I guess it's time for my notes. All right, let's do this one first then. Uh, as we said, it was a Liberty Cargo, so let's switch to that. The range first, so the count the vertical marks uh, five and a bit or six. Let's go with six marks. So, six marks to the top line here. The mast height is 23.7, which is around 21, 22, 23.7, puts it about 13 and a half kilometers away. So, let's dial that in. Um, angle on bow, and we take that range, 13 and a half. Line that up with the ship length, um, which is 147. About there. And then we count the horizontal marks, which is pretty straight on 20, I think. 20 marks. Uh, so 20 marks here puts it at an angle of about 32 degrees. So let's do that. And we need to do the speed. We can't do that while we are moving. So let's come to a full stop. We're very close and we're running out of time as well. You might have to do a, a quick guesstimate of the speed. This is not going to be very accu accurate because um, we are moving at two knots and that's going to affect 
how long it takes the ship to move past the vertical line on the periscope. Whereas obviously if we weren't moving at all, then any movement on the on the ship would be just down to that ship itself. If you see what I mean, don't think I explained that correctly, but uh, never mind. Uh, now, thirty-three seconds. So, um, line up the time on the mid outer dial. Thirty-three. About here-ish. The ship length, which is one four seven. About here, let's say. Speed is shown here. Now that's saying it's going at about eight knots, almost nine knots, which I don't think is correct. I think it's going slower than that. So I'm going to guesstimate about six. And we've still got a bit of time left. It's very calm and very bright outside, out, um, side, so we don't want to, don't want them to spot our periscope. Um, how close are we? We're about 500 meters away. We could back off a bit more. Let's change the range. 600 meters. And ready to support the torpedoes. Now maybe I should fire one at each. Uh, okay, so tube one is going to be for the first ship. Make it a magnetic, actually, no, impact. Let's do them both impact because they're type twos and. I don't want them to mal malfunction. Whoops, wrong button. Alright, we're almost ready. Let's aim straight for the middle. Actually, I should really be aiming at this one first. Let's do that. I don't know if the... I assume the solution would be incorrect for this one because it's a completely different ship type, but I don't have enough time to do the whole spinny disc thing again for this guy. Well, let's just try it and see. Let's just try it and see. We've got no other choice. And this one is a large merchant, and that should be. Oh no, we're doing it impact. I, I forgot. I'm a bit out of sorts. I thought we were doing magnetic, but no, we're doing impact. Okay, get yourself together. Right, when this gets to 340, I'm going to fire. Okay. Firing tube one. Now let's go back to this one. Make sure the tube's open. Firing tube two. Okay, now they should hit very quickly because we're very close. So we should know pretty much straight away if we've been successful or not. Here's the first one. And that looks good. I don't know if this is... Which ship this is for? Torpedo That's the second ship. So that one hit pretty much perfectly. And now for the second torpedo. There it is! Boom! Perfect! Nice. 
Absolutely perfect. We hit both ships pretty much square on. The lighters in front bar. I don't know if we've managed to damage the engines enough to slow them down or stop them completely. The lighters in front bar. And we don't have any fires, unfortunately. We've got one hit here. Another hit here, and the propellers still turning for both ships. So I assume we haven't managed to completely disable them. Well, no matter, let's just try and keep pace with them. And see what happens. 